Hello friends. Welcome to another Word of Gord. Tonight I want to uh, tell you about uh, a not brief but not extensive spirit contact that I attempted with the uh, quote-unquote victims of the San Bernardino shootings of a uh, week or so back there. It had been on my mind for a while almost as if spirit was suggesting that I make the effort and I wasn't quite sure why as there are as we all know many victims of gun crimes particularly you know particularly in the United States although they are all over the world and I did a uh, many uh, quite a few years ago a retro view of the uh, Mumbai shootings which I'll, I'll put a link on behind this one um, where I checked out what everyone was up to in that as far as I could ascertain anyway and with this one without any um, sense of a clear purpose in mind other than making contact I followed my intuition and um, made a little contact uh, an hour or so ago this uh, Sunday evening in December and what I discovered was a group of people um, of different ages and uh, well of course they're going to be of different ages and, and I read of this you know some time ago in the paper brief descriptions but not that I can remember anything now of particularly other than we're all they seem to be all workmates um, and different attitudes they weren't all the same they didn't all have the same feelings that they wanted to express um, and maybe that was the point of it all um, some were still very angry um, about having about the whole thing having happened at all angry at the shooters um, angry at you know God life for making them victims they felt uh, what you know why us that sort of a thing and um, understandably um, whether people are uh, church-going Christians or you know religionists of one stripe or another or atheists or agnostics or even they haven't given much thought to it at all there's still this sense if they're taken out in a quote-unquote taken out in an accident or a shooting or you know earthquakes you know any sort of um, thing where, where they seem to have no control they can be very angry uh, for some time in the astral plane they, uh, they they won't accept what has happened to them and they kick and fight you know and uh, I don't say kick and fight in a physical sense you know in a, a mental or an emotional sense and some of them express that to me quite angrily others were more accepting um, various people spoke at, at very it was like I walked into a room and they were all sitting around a large table and uh, that is how it appeared to me and they may have set that up saying oh this guy's gonna come and talk to you and then he's gonna put it on the internet yada 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 that's quite possible that's happened in other cases although, although as you know I tend to do contacts with single persons um, you know Robin Williams Steve Jobs yada yada um, so um, some were, um, you know, you know, some definitely wanted to point out that although they were, you know, certainly unhappy, deeply unhappy about losing contact, physical contact with their loved ones, their families, their spouses, their lives, um, uh, they had uh, been shown some of the delights of the astral plane and had enjoyed them. One man specifically spoke about the uh, great time he had mountain climbing. That, as I've said in many of my uh, either books or videos, there's plenty of mountain ranges on the astral plane. And for those who like that sort of exercise, it's a great, great fun. And he, he, he pointed out to me, or he, his interest was in that he never got out of breath the whole time he was climb mountain climbing which I guess one does I don't do it myself um, when one is doing that it's a great strenuous exercise 
anyway, he had a wonderful time and he just wanted to, that was one of his contributions. Another fellow mentioned going skiing, astral plane skiing, which is loads of fun. Mentioned that before. I mean, lots of things on the astral plane are fun. Your body has very little or no gravity. You're as light as a feather, no resistance. So anything that involve, involves movement is tremendously good fun. Uh, movement of any kind, I might add, including flying, as, as perhaps you will know. Uh, no one mentioned that they'd gone flying, but uh, that doesn't mean they didn't. Uh, you know, I was talking to had a brief interaction with a number of people who had probably been told, okay, this guy's going to come, he's going to take some opinions and points of view and then take them back and put them in the internet. So they were sort of ready, everyone was kind of ready to make some small points here and there. And um, I'm grateful for them for doing that. That's, that's very um, interesting and considerate that they would uh, want to do that and then sort of have a spirit guide kind of poke me on the shoulder a few times in the last few days and go, come on, Gord, do this, do this, come on. And as I said, for a while I was sort of thinking, well, you know, I mean, there's lots of people die in violent death, so, you know, I wasn't quite sure what the overall purpose would be, but I think I'm, I'm coming to see it now, and I hope you are too. So a variety of reactions, and as I say, the, the people that were annoyed and angry and frustrated really were annoyed and angry and frustrated. It wasn't... Uh, you know, they weren't play acting anything. They were deeply hurt by this whole thing and have yet to, on on the long road to recovery. Now, I know they've been shown by their guides, those spirits who take this job on when they're in the spirit worlds, of being shown how to move into intimate contact with their still living loved ones and be close to them and try to communicate with them through the, the grief that they would all be feeling and uh, their levels of quote-unquote success at doing that, well, um, I think there was a variety, as there always is. Some people seem to pull it off and, and have some communication with loved ones, even if it's only making an appearance, you know, um, at the bottom of the bed and waving, or, you know, doing a bunch of, you know, little tricks around the house that make people go, oh, I think that's him or her. You know the sort of thing. We see it reported all the time. Uh, so um, there was a lot of that. Um, anger at the uh, the shooters, of course, because they were, at least, uh, as I understand it, at least one of them was a workmate, and uh, I guess the workmate and his wife, and had absorbed this sort of uh, jihadist ideology on the quiet, and then ex sort of exploded without, you know, direction from elsewhere, you know, self-starters, as they say. So um, what else happened? I um, examined sort of clairvoyantly the activity of spirit guides, as I'd done on the Mumbai shooting, and sure enough, the, the shooters had spirit guides that were monitoring them all along and were waiting for some little outburst like this. So the spirit guides of the potential victims, and they would uh, they would be sensed at the, at that group gathering, that that work party, um, had been notified and were definitely ready to attend to the um, how shall I say helping the quote unquote deceased be removed from the scene and the turmoil and anxiety and terror of that shooting scene. And that's something that spirit guides do a lot. They get the astral bodies away as quickly as possible. And if victims are left on their own, they sometimes get trapped by the intense emotions that they're surrounded by. So it's great to get them away quickly. And with co communication between the spirit guides, so telepathic, of course, that was accomplished without too much trouble. And I've, I know from other uh, examinations that this happens regularly now. You'll see it in various books where people will say, oh, when I died, I was pulled right out of my body by my spirit guide. Uh, sometimes even be, people in car crashes and whatnot, they're whipped out of their bodies like a second before the impact, and you know, this sort of a thing. Now, how that is done, I'm not exactly sure, but some spirit guides are smarter than others, and you're very well versed in these sort of things, and it can be done. 
uh, my own experience tends to be uh, ministering to the recently dead in a sort of sort of astral pastor kind of way. I'm rather good at that. And um, I, had, I don't recall ever having, you know, yanked somebody out of their physical body like a split second before they die. Although it's possible because we all do things out of body that we don't remember later. Not just me, everybody. So um, I did have a go at looking for the shooters. They seem to be in some kind of paradise world. Um, you know, <laughs> it seemed to be a sort of, um, it's like a version of um, not particularly, well, I don't, I don't know much about Muslim heaven, but it was more like ancient Greek heaven or the ancient Romans, how they sort of saw, you know, lying around on couches and, you know, picking grapes and munching on cakes and stuff. And, you know, in this sort, sort of little paradise with, you know, gardens and birds flying around. And, and interestingly enough, I couldn't seem to get their attention. It was sort of comical. I wanted to sort of, you know, sort of not sort of confront them angrily and wave my hand and, you know, you tell the wicked people, which, you know, I think they are, but there's no point lecturing people in heaven because they don't want to listen to you. They're not going to. You know, your righteousness will not penetrate their righteousness. Um, I found that from before. So, but what was interesting was I couldn't seem to get their attention at all. And I, I, I resorted to sort of jumping up and down and going, hey, hey, hey couldn't do that either so they had um, vibrated themselves with supposition and expectation and ideology into a sort of little private heavenly paradise which they were enjoying which they and they felt entitled to enjoy so a little lesson there for us all I was I was not expecting that I don't know how much I've experienced that before I have experienced a little bit not with crime committers like that but um, fundamentalist Christians will often block themselves. Ooh, um, little break there. Am I gonna get beyond that break? So, um, sorry for about a 20 second break there in transmission. I always seem to get these with this computer. Um, uh, I was talking about blocking yourself off. You know, fundamentalist types of any stripe can block themselves off in their little private nirvana paradise heaven world where they follow the ideology that only they of their little sect can get into heaven and it, no one else matters. I've, I've experienced that, but that tends to be um, communities in a sort of mountain, sh mountain surrounded valley. That's what I've noticed with those types of people. And when you approach them, they either don't see you or deny your existence altogether. You're some kind of, you know, fantasy. Anyway, uh, there's these uh, shooters in their little paradise. And as, I, as let me say, I do not uh, condone their act or praise them in their little paradise. Not at all. I don't. I'm as disgusted by their actions as you are. But that seems to be, I just want to point out, certain afterlife realities have got nothing to do with our conventional moralities or, or what we think uh, you know, the whole sort of crime and punishment sort of scenario. It works on Earth sometimes, but it doesn't necessarily work there. Um, again, people can commit these sort of crimes and feel a terrible weight on their conscience, and then, then they will punish themselves and descend into a sort of a hell realm. But at this point, these people, these souls, were not did not seem to be experiencing that, at least not to me. Anyway, um, I think that's probably all for this little report. Um, and I hope no one's um, either too shocked or too offended. Um, these are my experiences, and I um, do not insist that they are correct, but I am um, been doing it for a long while, and I'm, you know, more or less sort of um, feeling that that's reasonably accurate. And uh, with that, I will uh, bid you farewell, and... Uh, God bless you all. God bless us all on our journey to the stars.